What, what do you see as the role of marketing in helping the CEO and the rest of the company move through such a transition? Well, the role of marketing are multiple roles, but they are very, uh, very important ones. The, uh, the, the most important thing is, in fact, you know, this is about um, serving societal needs and being in touch with society. That's the role of marketing. It's the only department, to be honest, in the first place that is the sensing has always been there to sense and we've lost that direction to some extent. So, so that I think is, is the most important thing. To succeed in their role and to drive humanized growth, CMOs need to continuously align with the C-suite. But what is it actually that CEOs expect from their chief marketing officers? How do they think about the marketing function? What should CMOs bring to the table? Watch this 20 minutes of video and you'll find out. Enjoy. This is now and this is us, right? If we don't act, who, who, who would do it? And if not now, then when? And I think uh, CMOs have this huge opportunity to work with their you know, management team in reinventing how we do things, anchoring you know, the marketing work into the purpose of the company. I think that's a very important point. What's going to be our noble purpose, uh, to uh, quote Lisa McLeod? What, what, what good are we going to do in the world? And anchor what we do in that. And then when we craft, when we do, so I, I've heard I teach segmentation, targeting, positioning, you know, all that kind of good stuff that you guys are incredibly familiar with. When we do this, do we think about all of the stakeholders? And do we think about of being a force for good, not just for the customers and the shareholders, but for all of the stakeholders. How do you work with marketing and what do you expect of marketing? Um, well, I mean, we have an exceptional uh, marketeer who, who has rebuilt our marketing to, to actually reflect what needs to happen uh, much more vis-a-vis -vis our purpose, I mean. Uh, because uh, the traditional way of marketing is pretty much over now. You know, uh, agencies, high fees, back margins, media buying, pricing, uh, all of these things uh, are kind of buried now. And I'm, I'm, and I'm not saying that digital marketing, you know, social media, et cetera, has replaced it because that's, that's another uh, cup of tea entirely, but has its own problems as well. Uh, Going forward, the only marketing that's going to work is authenticity and uh, really communicating to the consumer what you're all about. And that better be a purpose which is worthwhile for the consumer to consider you above others. And uh, I, would, I would definitely describe the role of a marketeer uh, completely differently now as opposed to five years ago or even two years ago, three years ago, because now... As this urgency builds, you know, this, let's go with my weekly analogy, 421 weeks. As these weeks tick along, and they tick along really fast, really fast, uh, consumers are increasingly going to be agitated by their experiences. Fires, floods, droughts, extreme weather events, uh, anomalies which defy their understanding of nature because they haven't seen it before. Um, and, and those kinds of experiences build an urgency, a kind of search for who and where is doing the right thing. So combining that urgency with your authentic message, I think, is the future of market. And, and as this has become the purpose of your business, this person has to live that purpose completely from one end to the other. And naturally, of course, they, they, are, they are a natural selection again I use natural a lot for a reason, uh, to lead a business like that. Absolutely, because they live what the consumer needs, wants, reacts to, and they also understand the purpose of the business, and hopefully that translates to the product. Now, what I said is very abstract, uh, and many people may not agree, but the practic what that practically means is the challenge has to be finding the right way to communicate this via the products or services efficiently. And I think a lot of the, the resources, capital, money, human, need to be rethought and reallocated. 
you were a marketer, now you're the general manager, you lead the company and you have a strong marketer by your side. One of the dynamics we talk a lot about uh, at the Institute for Real Growth is the, the role that marketers can play to help the company be successful in this multi-stakeholder world. And I'm going to ask you both the same question because I'm sure they're complementary perspectives. As, as a CEO, what is the role that you need your marketer to play here? And, and has it evolved? Is it evolving as we're going through these changes? Yeah, it's a great question. By the way, I was tied brand manager. I remind Tamara of that every you know couple of days or so. I'm like, as you know, I was tied brand manager, right? Okay, good. Um, listen, I think what I brand think, was that? Um, oh, oh, yeah, Tide. Yes, it was Tide. <laughs> uh, great, great, uh, great brand. Great company too. So you know what I'd say is uh, a really important role, and I think it, it it's in a number of areas. I think first of all. Um, and, and Tamara particularly is excellent at this. I think bringing the voice of the consumer to the table all the time, right? Reminding us as a leadership team that has all kinds of demands and all kinds of stakeholders that we are a consumer company and we're here to consume, we're here to serve our consumers. And one of the things we talk about and is, is deep human understanding and really understanding the, the it, it's more than consumer insights. It's really understanding the human and, and what that means and how we can translate that. And so, you know, Tamara and her group are, we, we are spending a lot of time on how we get deeper and deeper understanding. You know, the other piece is in a world where now engagement with consumers has changed so radically. I mean, you know, it's probably years now that there's no more digital marketing. It's marketing in a digital world. You know, how, how do we not only create incredible content that's insight driven, but how do we then reach consumers when and where they need it and where they need it most? And how do we really make sure we leverage those opportunities to have an impact? And then in the end, you know, Tamara um, and I, I see the marketing organization is, is, is more of the, you know, the, the vision, the, the dream, the purpose for the uh, organization, which is why Tamara played such a key role in the development in, in the purpose, partnering with me, but with our leadership team. And how do we really think about that? And how do we really get to a place that can help guide us to be a great performance and purpose-driven company? That it's very clear that you have a very clear expectation also in terms of just what you were talking about product quality improvement uh, uh, lower sugar etc etc um, marketing will need to deliver that and, and you will be on top of them right yeah i know just a marketing is the um at the end is, is the uh, the intelligence that drives the growth right and and so that they need to be the architects of growth for the company and and, and being those architects of growth require understanding the end-to-end, -end, understanding the, um, the cons not only the consumer, but what else is behind the, um, the organization to drive that, that, uh, that growth in, in, a, in a responsible way, in a way that is connected to the values of the leaders and the associates of the company and, and the company we want to be. So it is, a, it is a very high responsibility role in the company. I, um, and, and it's a big to, and important task. It's massive. Very clear. It, it's the most important. And without a good vision from the marketing team, not, not on the consumer vision only, but the, the full architecture of growth for the company, then we, we uh, you know, we, we, yeah. there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, movement, but no traction. Some companies, and I know you, you've worked a long time ago at, at Coke, for example. In Coke, we've seen interesting uh, pivots from basically appointing a CGO, a chief growth officer, about a CMO, and then, then coming back. How do you see that whole discussion, CMO, CGO? I mean, you're now in a, you were a CMO, you're now the CEO. How do you view the growth responsibility for CMO? And do you could you see it making sense that you actually appoint a CGO above a CMO? No, oh, I, I think that, well, I have a CGO, I call it CGO. Um, I think it's, uh, it, at least in my mind, the CGO is, uh, it's, it's the evolution of a CMO. Uh, I mean, 
it's to make clear that um, growth uh, needs to be led for sure by the CEO, but with the right hand, that is the person from marketing, with the marketing background in the company that, that should understand the future, should predict the future better than anybody else and should be leading what that means and the consequences of that with consumers, with every, everything else. So, so really has a big component on strategy. I see companies that they have marketing and then they have strategy. <laughs> that doesn't mean, that has no meaning for me. When I see companies that have a head of strategy or a head of marketing or strategies in finance, right? Or somewhere else, then it's like, you know, marketing is just communication or marketing has a weaker role in that company. So for me, when, when you say CGO, or at least in my mind, is making clear to the company inside and out that we are seeking growth and that this person is helping me defining the strategy uh, to get there and trying to understand what is the future and, and, and bringing and helping me as CEO to, 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 to guide us uh, to the future. Um, that's, that's how I see it. Would you say in, in general that that's, let's say, one of the most critical conditions for an effective CMO-CEO collaboration? Do you want me to start? I think, I think there's, sure. you know, uh, throughout the journey, Frank, I know you want to, I mean, we don't want to paint that everything's always rosy. There's always highs and lows as we go through a transformation like, like uh, we have done. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, Alex and I have made it a point to just have really regular, you know, regular touch points on, on the critical topics that we need to work together to move us through, to get to the next phase. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, going through what the work that we did, we had, um, different periods where, you know, we had operational roadblocks or dependencies within other business partner relationships that our team has with other parts of the business, um, in sales operations and finance in HR. Um, you know, marketing is one of those functions that touches every touches and supports every single aspect of the business. And so, um, you know, as we're going through, uh, the work that we, we had to, to accomplish last year, I mean, there were definitely critical points where, um, you know, taking the time to step back on, giving true headspace and time to understand the background and details Mm -hmm. of the environment that we were trying to break through to get to the next level of scale. Um, Those were, those were points that we had, you know, whether that was on, um, you know, technology integration or process and change management, Mm -hmm. lots of of things that I think we just try to stay lockstep and, and address them right away, get clarity right away on alignment so we can move forward. Yeah. I don't know if you like to. No, I, I think, I mean, for, for me, it kind of starts with like, do you actually value the function of marketing or not? Well, that, you know? that Alex, I mean, I mean, you like, won't you find know, a better I, no, CEO. No, I mean, I mean first, <laughs> first it starts there. Do you believe in marketing and do you believe in that? But, you know, we, we have not talked about one of the big, you know, elephants in the room, which is ultimately marketing needs to create demand for the business. Yeah. And the B2B world, that's super, super critical for me that ultimately pipeline and opportunities are our lifeblood. Yeah. And so, you know, we talked a lot about the brand. We talked a lot about the transformation. You know, that's kind of nearly the... the uh, it's table stakes. Yeah. I mean, it really is. Yeah. It's and a foundation. That's a foundation. But, but in some ways, you know, imagine a board that you work with. You know, and you look at your marketing budget and where do you spend it and what's the return on the investments. I mean, these are the conversations where these things become a lot more serious, you know, where you think about like, hey, that's what we want to do on the brand side. But we also want to drive demand for the business. And there are moments where, uh, especially when you acquire companies, uh, systems don't work with each other. You know, um, leads are being uh, named differently. Yeah. Uh, the metrics don't always look up to the right, et cetera. And you're thinking like, oh my goodness, what's happening? You know? And that's where really I think trust is being built, which is like, do we stick together? You know, do we actually you know, have the same perspective about what we're doing? I, my belief is always you need the brand to be 
the halo effect for the entire business. And it's tough to be pinpointing where demand comes from sometimes, yeah. but you need a good brand story. Yeah. And then obviously you need to have a great cadence about the operations of the business. And Kirsten is one of those few leaders who actually can do brand and demand and operations together. Yeah. But that's the part where, where, uh, where, you know, sometimes, you know, really talking very honestly, where sometimes the pressure is the highest is because you need to show results, you know, and then you can't just say like, hey, our logo is pretty or something. That's not a result. The result is like, hey, show me the dollar and cents in terms of what are we driving for the business. And I think that's where I think, again, the trust really comes in between the CMO and the CEO is to say like, look, how do we ensure that with the rest of the leadership team, we have complete alignment on driving results for the business? What do you see as the role of marketing in helping the CEO and the rest of the company move through such a transition? Well, the role of marketing are multiple roles, but they are very, uh, very important ones. The, uh, the, the most important thing is, in fact, you know, this is about um, serving societal needs and being in touch with society. That's the role of marketing. It's the only department, to be honest, in the first place that is sensing has always been there to sense and we've lost that direction to some extent so so that i think is, is the most important thing then the second thing is obviously to get that translated into specific action the most important thing at the end uh, of what the company stands for is actually communicated through the brands that the company sells and increasingly it's not only the functional benefits anymore but increasingly what you stand for as a company as a brand that goes way beyond that or Unilever, yeah. Men Dove stands for women's self-esteem. Health Boy stands for helping a child reach the age of five. Domestos stands for attacking the issues of open defecation. So the marketing community are often these catalyzers for change, for bringing in that outside uh, need and driving that internally. And then obviously um, you are in most companies, the marketing community is the talent pool. It still is the biggest source of, of talent for CEOs and for other leading positions in the company. So you do have a responsibility there as well, if I may say, of creating the right leaders. And, and uh, you know, I'd call those out as probably the, the more important uh, points here. And it's not easy yeah. to do because it happens at the same time that the marketing community has to deal with a lot of these other challenges that we talked about, not least the fast pace of technology, uh, the bifurcation of, uh, of society. Um, you know, it's become more and more difficult to establish these connections, to stay ahead of the trends that are happening. So I don't envy you, but if this community can do it, who can? It's as simple as that. Is there, um, is there any last call to action that you would like to do to this audience of mostly of, of, of senior marketing leaders? Uh. Be curious, yeah. give before you receive, and have some fun and a beer along the way. <laughs> cool, cool. 